prophet Isaiah had prophesied many, many years ago. And this is how he announced his commission that the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, and to proclaim the year of the Lord. So if you look at that, uh, those few statements that Jesus makes, he's talking about the gospel that he was bringing into this world. And I was going to tie that with the book of Mark uh, because I want us to go through the book of Mark uh, systematically, uh, maybe chapter where, where the chapter is short, we'll deal with it. If the chapter is long, we'll see how, how the passages divide themselves. And so today we are going to uh, do our study, or the preaching is coming from the book of Mark, the first chapter. And uh, I'm going to be, this is how I like to do it. I dwell in the text. I might go around to other verses of uh, other texts of the scripture, but I always come back to the text because that's how I want to build uh, the teachings or the study so that you can go back to your, uh, your house, wherever you are, and sit down and go through the notes or through, go through the word and see the things that are coming out of the text and how they build your faith, uh, build you up, encourage you, and challenge you. That's how I, I, love, I like to do it. Uh, I can go topic by topic and jump here and there and there, but I like to stay in the text so that I can drive things from the text that will help us and build us uh, to be stronger Christians to, uh, and encourage us to walk in faith or according to what the scripture is teaching us. And that should be uh, the essence of, uh, of a Bible study or uh, studying the Bible. Otherwise, if we go all over, then you, you will leave this place and somebody will ask you, what did you learn today? And you be like, I don't know if it was revelation or was it, uh, it, was, it was everything and I don't really know what we were talking about. So for a Bible study, I want us to stay in the text so that we can gain from the text, be encouraged from the text and move uh, get something out of the text. So, if you have your Bibles today, we will be in the book of Mark, chapter 1. And maybe for a, a quick uh, background, uh, the tradition says that this gospel was written by Mark, uh, John Mark. Around about maybe over over two decades after Christ is gone, or after Christ coming to the world, preaching the gospel, dying, rising up, and going back to heaven, maybe uh, de some decades, uh, and maybe that's enough for us as a as a as a congregation right now. If you want more, there's a lot of books out there. We can, we can read about the background, who wrote, uh, and the arguments that theologians come up with, which sometimes uh, don't really make a lot of sense, but they are out there. You can go out and you can even Google while I'm preaching and you'll be, <laughs> yeah, they do, <laughs> they do that these days. Uh, they just Google while you're preaching and they're like, ah, oh, Daniel, eh. <laughs> So you can do that, and uh, you'll get my, uh, a lot of information from, uh, from that. But uh, I want us to go straight to the, to the text, and let's get something out of the text tonight to help us live the faith. Yeah. So let me read. Uh, for today, we are going verse 1 through 20, uh, if I can make it. But I, I believe I will. The beginning of the Gospel of John of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send you my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. 
the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Many years have passed before the starting of uh, Jesus' ministries. About 400 years, it's kind of like the heavens were shut. It's like they, there was no message coming to the people. For about a hundred, uh, 400 years or so, from the book of Malachi to the beginning of the Gospels, it seems like God was not even speaking to his people. They call the, uh, people call this the inter, intertestamental period, a period where a lot is written, but it's extra biblical. A lot was going on in the nation of Israel around, and around, around the world, but it seems like God was a, kind of like took leave, if I may use that word. He doesn't do that. But it's like God was not speaking to his people. But prophecies were there. Prophets had prophesied about the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus Christ. They had spoken about that. And some are like, like Isaiah, like Malachi. They had already spoken of a time when Jesus would come into this world, sent by God for a mission, a mission that we already dealt with last time. Preach the gospel or to proclaim the good news to set free, uh, prisoners free, to set people uh, 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 out of uh, bondage, to announce the accepted year of the Lord. Prophets had already said or spoken about that. And many years later, Mark writes this, uh, uh, opening his, Bible, uh, his, his, his writing. He says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I, I like the book of Mark. Mark, da, Mark doesn't waste a lot of time with bath narratives, what was going on, how Jesus was conceived, how Jesus came, uh, was brought to the temples for dedications and all that. Mark seems to say, it's good information, but for me, I'm going to start where it matters. It is about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. For him, if anything you have to remember, is that Jesus brought the good news from God for you and for me. For Mark, that's very important. He doesn't like to waste time. You read the book of Mark, it's like somebody telling you a story. Uh, says this and, 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 and Jesus, and, and, and. He has no time for other issues except for what Jesus, why Jesus came, and what he came to do, and what he came to accomplish. So he goes straight where it matters. Nothing about the first years. Uh, when he was a teenager, 12 years maybe, uh, when he was, no, he doesn't care about that. He comes straight to when Jesus starts his ministry. And he says, I'm writing about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe we should pause and ask ourselves, I know we know this, but. Mark was not just writing an introduction the way you would write something. It's like, okay, let me give you the introduction and then I'll come. He knows what he is talking about. That's the first very important thing for him. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And what's the gospel of Jesus Christ? I think... Uh, of all the texts that summarizes, uh, summarizes this very well is Paul, who speaks about it. Let me just read it quickly. Uh, First Corinthians chapter number 15. Let's go there quickly. First Corinthians 15. 
Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to, to the word I preached to you, unless you be believed in vain. And this is it. For I deliver to you as of first importance uh, what I also received, that Christ died for our sin in accordance with the scripture. That he was buried and he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scripture. That he appeared to save us, then to the twelve. This is the summary of the gospel that Mark is saying that may, uh, a, a few years uh, to come, Jesus will die for our sin. That's what is important for Mark. I'm preaching, I'm writing about this gospel of Jesus Christ. And what is this gospel? That Jesus died and he rose. And why he did, did he die? He died for our sin. I hope uh, we are still together on that. Hello? Hello? The gospel. And we are living at a time where we have this cheap gospel running around with preachers. Hello, look at me. We have this cheap gospel. Like, come to Jesus, you'll feel good. It's not about feeling good. I'm saying it's not about feeling good. This cheap gospel going around like uh, you have come to Jesus and it will be fine with you. Like, you'll be a good person. It's more than just being a good person. Is having a relationship with God through Christ. Amen. I come from Kenya, and sometimes I hear these preachings going around, and I'm like, guys, is that the gospel? Come to Jesus and you will be a good man. Come to Jesus and you'll be changed. Come to Jesus and you will be blessed. It's more than that. It's a relationship. Can I hear an amen? amen? It's about turning to God through Christ. He died and he rose again. That we may have life in him. So Mark says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send you a message. So before even Christ comes, Isaiah and Malachi have already announced that a time is coming when God will send his messenger to prepare for the coming Messiah. And you read in this, the book of Mark, this guy who was to go before Christ, his name is uh, John the Baptist. And listen to what the message of John the Baptist is. It's not just another message that you can run around with. It's very much focused on what Mark is saying. It's about the preparation of the gospel, the good news that Jesus is coming into this world to save the sinner. Paul, my friend Paul is here today. I love you, man. Thank you for coming. Behold, I send my messen a messenger before you, uh, before you are faced. Who will prepare you away? The, vo the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. And then verse 4 says, Jesus, uh, J John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism for, for, the, gift, for, for the forgiveness of sin. So see how... The message of John is tying very well with that what Jesus is coming to do. A message of repentance. A message of forgiveness.
Uh, let me say this uh, with all humility. Christianity is about repentance and forgiveness and not any other thing. If it doesn't build from there, it can be another good religion. <laughs> oh, I'm going to repeat that. If it doesn't begin there, it's another beautiful religion. It has to start from there. And John the Baptist starts right from there. And I think in Matthew, that's for Matthew, Matthew expounds a little bit on that. When the people were coming to, uh, to John the Baptist to be baptized, he would baptize them and he, would em he emphasized repentance and living like one who has repented. Oh, okay, let me repeat that. It's not just repenting and saying, well, brothers, I've repented. I'm now a new creature in the Lord. Now I'm serving Christ. That's good. But according to John, uh, John the Baptist is saying, it's repentance that is, a, that is demonstrated in your works. How you live. How you, how you interact with people. How you live in your office, let me preach there. How you live in your neighborhood, how you live in your community, how you live at your place of work, how you live should show the fruit of repentance. But we are living at a time when people are like, you know, I, I repented. Just so it, so after repenting, yeah, now I just live my life. I just repented and I, wait a minute. This is not your life. You've been bought by a price. You better live for the person who bought you. How many of you are working and you are, you are working for that office of that company? You just don't do your things the way you want. You do your things according to the instructions and the way the, that, that, uh, that company operates. If you want to work for them, do what they want. <laughs> well, if you're working for them, what do you do? You do what they, they want you to do. I have a friend, my friend, one of my friends, uh, he was contractor, concrete, mud, bread. A very good guy. But he wants you to work. You better work. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you, if you, you better work. The same way, if I'm a Christian, I should be like, I should be a Christian. I should show the fruit. Am I being on, am I being hard? That's who we are. That's who we are supposed to be. John comes in and he says, the text says, John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And all the countryside of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. Now John, uh, how he was clothed, verse 7, and he preached saying, after me comes uh, he who is mightier than I. The, stride, the strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to, uh, to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So my, my, uh, John is saying, I'm just preparing for the one who is coming. And this is the message that he was go he's going to build on. Repentance and forgiveness of sin. This is what he's going, he is going to continue to do.
And then, verse 9, in those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being open, torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came down from heaven saying, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. So, let's go back to the, where we start. John is, uh, Mark is talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That Jesus is the person that God has sent for our forgiveness. When we repent and turn to him. And in this book of Mark, we will see things that John, Mark will continue to hit on that. Sorry, in my, I'm talking about John a lot. Uh, but that's my, my speciality. I wrote about the book of John for over two years. So, I, so sometimes it comes John, John, John. So you have to, I mean Mark. So Mark is writing about Jesus Christ. That he is the message that is coming from God. He is the good news coming from God for us. And he's going to emphasize that I am saying this because God himself will approve. God the Father will prove to you that he is the one that he has sent. The Holy Spirit will prove to you that Jesus is the one who has been sent by God. The, then another thing will, that, will, that will prove he is the one, the miracles, the signs and wonders that will follow him. Even angels will speak about him. The Holy Spirit will, all, will speak about him. And guess what? Even demons will, de demons will speak about Jesus. Remember every time Jesus would walk into a synagogue and... The spirits out of uh, the evil spirit will say, have you come to torment us before our time? We know who you are. You are the son of God. Miracles will testify he is the son of God. God himself will speak from heaven that he is, the son, he is my son. The Spirit will guide him to do what God has sent him. The angels will stand with him to prove that he's the one that God has sent. Receiving Christ is a big thing, my friend. It carries all the testimonies from God, from the angels, from the Spirit of God. Even evil spirits will know who you are. I don't dare to repeat that. Even evil evil spirit know who we are in Christ. So Jesus is baptized. When he comes out of the water, a voice comes from heaven that this is my son whom I am well pleased. This is the person that is, I'm sending for your salvation. Hello? So last week we talked about how Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted. That's in verse 12. The spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was, he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. Even angels know who Jesus is. The prophets know, knew and they, they, they knew that he was coming. John the Baptist confirms he is the one. John the Baptist was one of the prophets. So the prophets knew. God knows he's the one who sent. The spirit of God knows. Angels know. 
and the miracles that will be coming as we will be following the miracles because this book is all, it, it, this is about miracles to confirm who Jesus is and what he came to do. Those who are lowly in the community, those who are despised in the community, Jesus would reach out to them and perform something that everyone would say, God is here, and they will turn to Jesus or turn to God. There's a lot of talk on miracles. But if miracles are happening and they are not pointing back to Jesus, I don't know. I don't see the use of it. Miracles, if God is using me to perform miracles, it's so that you may see Christ, not see me. I don't matter at all. He matters more. Than anybody else. I'm tired of this, man. The preachers who think like miracles about it's about them. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about him. I hear people coming. Yeah. I'm the man of God. I will pray for you and it will happen so that you may know I'm the man of God. I don't want to know the man of God. I want to know the God of man. If it doesn't point to him, it doesn't matter. It could be your own miracle. I'm sorry. It could be your own miracle for your own sake. But the miracles that we will be seeing in the book of Mark, they will always encourage us to look at him. Trust him. Depend on him. Look unto him. So now, I'm laying a foundation that John, Mark is talking about <laughs> Mark is talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophets affirm about the gospel of Jesus Christ or G, who Jesus Christ is. God affirms who Jesus is. The spirit affirms who Jesus is. The angels affirm who Jesus is. And the miracles will affirm who Jesus is. So after laying the foundation, after Mark laying the foundation of what is coming, that this is the gospel, and this gospel was already uh, prophesied, and the guy who is preparing for the coming of, the, of, of Jesus Christ is John the Baptist. And then now the next verse is now Jesus comes and shows himself. He's baptized and the spirit of God, the, whole, the heavens open and God speaks from heaven. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then he goes out of the water. He goes into the wilderness to be tempted. And then Jesus starts his ministry. Let me speak a little bit about that. There is a lot of ministry without preparation. There's a lot of ministries going around without preparation. Jesus didn't just show up. He was prepared or he prepared what he was going to do. Sometimes the pre preparation can take longer than you think. For Moses, it was years. I don't know why God makes it so long. He understands better than we do. But it's, it's, it's usually a, a preparation takes time. For Moses, it was Moses thought he could just wake up one day and start delivering the Israelites from the bondage. And he decided he was going to kill an Egyptian and kill another, maybe kill one after another. It would take years. 
then God deals with him. He's found out that he had killed somebody and he flees into the wilderness and God prepares him and brings him back to Egypt. He's a vessel ready to be used by God. If God can prepare us, we can move into ministry and do exploits for him. Problem is, not many people want to be prepared. We live in this microwave kind of a world where you press the button 30 seconds and then you're ready to go. I just found out we bought a new th- another machine. You can you can roast your uh, you can barbecue your your meat, man. Like how many seconds? Is it five minutes? Like it's ready, and we eat. How many minutes is that, Sarah? Like shh, it's ready. Let's eat. And Christians are excited about the fastness of things. And then we come to ministry, we think it's the same thing. You press a button and there you are, you are being used of God. There's always the preparation. Jesus was prepared. We don't read anything from when he, a lot about what he was doing from year one to maybe 30 years. We don't get to hear a lot. All this time of preparation. Even when he appears, he's baptized. He doesn't run into the ministry. He goes into the wilderness to, pr- to be prepared. And then he comes back full of the Holy Spirit to preach the good news. Preparation. I'm talking about preparation. So verse 14, now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. Now Jesus comes in proclaiming the gospel of God. And this is the the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of God. All right. Now from there, he's healing, he's delivering, he's speaking about repentance and all that. That is tied up in one package, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Announced many years, confirmed by the prophets, confirmed by the Spirit of God, confirmed by the Father, confirmed by the angels, and he's going to continue confirming this by the signs and wonders that he will be doing from now henceforth. Am I still with you? And I have come to, uh, now we, we, we will come to that now beginning next week. So, in one chapter, in very few verses, we have already seen what God is preparing or what God is going to do in the book of Mark. In just these few verses that we have read, the gospel is not about anything but the good news about Jesus Christ. If it's any other thing, that's your own gospel. The gospel is about good news of repentance. Good news that you, God has brought Christ, that we, he, may, he, we may, he may die for us and just accept what he has done for us and start a new life. And that new life is the Christian life. Repentance goes with the new life. Hello? So, the, procl- so let me read again verse number 14. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. 
the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. See? That's what exactly John had said. It's about repentance and believing. It's about repentance and turning away and believing the, the gospel. Now, Jesus starts right from there. This is what I have come to proclaim. The kingdom is now coming. The kingdom is at hand. Repent now and believe what I'm going to tell you. Believe what I'm going to do for you. Believe what I'm about to accomplish for you. This is the gospel that I have brought to you. Repent and believe. So sad that we, we just want people to come and join us. Jesus doesn't say, come and join the king. John the Baptist doesn't say, come young men and join the team. Let's make a tremendous team called Christians. No. It's those who have turned around and have believed in Jesus Christ and they want to live for him regardless of what comes against them. They are ready to stand firm, put their faith in him, put their trust in him and face whatever comes into the, to them because they know what they have received, what is in them is greater than what is outside them. Can I hear an amen for that? I know the gospel of repentance is not preached much. It's not favorable. <laughs> repentance is not really favorable in our time. It makes people uncomfortable. Some would say, if you preach that message, you won't get people. Hey. They better. <coughs> are you kidding me? I mean, if we don't preach this, then what are we going to preach? What is, what is the essence of the gospel if we won't preach about turning to him and living for him? Last Wednesday, I said... We are receiving Christ, living for Christ, and reaching out. Receiving the message, living the message, and reaching out with the message. That's the gospel, and that's the way of Christ, the Christian way. So if we think it's not favorable, that's where John the Baptist starts. That's where Jesus picks up and runs with it. In fact, in other places, Jesus doesn't talk about, that's why I started by saying it's not a message of good, good, come to Christ so you can be a good person. Yeah, but that's a practice. The real thing is receiving him changing and living for him. The other things are just small things. Yeah, I will be blessed fine. Bless me, God. Yeah. But it's more than that. It's about living for him. And so when people look at you, they say, surely, this guy has been with Christ. Remember? That's how they were called Christians. They look like Christ. They acted like Christ. They behaved like Christ. They did things like Christ would want them to do. Christians. And if you leave that, I leave that, my neighbors leave that, guess what? It's easy for people to see the change in us. And some of these people will be like, Paul, I know you. What happened? Scott, Pastor Scott, I've known you for years. You look changed. What happened? Daniel, I know you. Something, something has happened in your life. What is this something? It becomes very easy to share the gospel if we are living the gospel. Oh, let me repeat that. It becomes very easy to share the gospel 
when we are living the gospel. It, it just emanates from us. It becomes us living and showing it. So, can I get an amen for that? <laughs> so what, did I, what have I said this evening? That the message that Mark is bringing is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news that God is starting a new chapter for us. Christ coming. So that we, not, we don't need to act. We just need to receive him and live for him and reach out with him. It was prophesied by the prophets John the Baptist saw it, he embraced it, he prepared, he said, this is the message, repentance, forgiveness and repentance. And Jesus speaks from there, the kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of God is at hand. And what is about the kingdom? For the, who, are the who, are, who, are, who are to inherit this kingdom? Those who have turned to God through Christ and living for him, serving him, reaching out with him. Let me finish up with this. The message of the gospel confirmed by the prophets, by God himself, by the spirit, and the miracles that we will see. Then, forgiveness, repentance, and living the faith. So if you will forget everything I say today, the gospel is the good news for us. When we receive it, we are supposed to live like we have received it. And we have to reach out the way we received it. Three things. The gospel of God, living the gospel, reaching out with the gospel. God bless you. Let's pray this evening. God, we thank you for this introduction on the book of Mark. And as we continue to look at the many miracles, the deeds, uh, the work and deeds that you performed through Christ, we ask you that you may help us to get an understanding of who you are. And that we can live for you and that we can reach out with the good news of what you have done in our lives. Help us to change and live like you have changed us. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, before I hand over the mic, from next week, we are going to over. I've done this study with a group somewhere. We are going over the book of Mark. And we are looking at the impact of the miracles. And how they change and transform those who received, those who witnessed the miracles. And how, that, how they glorified God through Christ for those miracles. So let's go through the book of Mark slowly, studying picking things out of the text and let the Bible teach us, bless us, change us, transform us. God bless you. Thank you, Daniel. I've got, I love, love, love being fed. And you know what's so awesome about Daniel and about uh, the way that he preaches and the way that 
really the way that, that the Lord has led anyone who's who's truly a pastor to preach is Daniel is not teaching us. And when I preach, I am not teaching you. It is God's word teaching us through Daniel. God's word teaching us through me and through men of God, women of God. But I, I do want to share this one story because I can't add to or take away from what Daniel taught. But I, I do want to share something that uh, feeds into what he was talking about. And that is receiving, living, and reaching out. As some of y'all know, I spent the past three days in Nashville at a uh, convention for the Southern Baptists. And one of those days, I was starving. I mean, parking was hard to find and everything else. So I come up, and they've got vendors inside, right? And I asked the man that gave me my hot dog, and their hot dogs were awesome. They were on point, by the way. But uh, anyway, I asked the man who gave me my hot dog, I said, what can I pray for you about? And that's just something that I do. I, whether I go to a gas station, fast food window, wherever I go, I ask, what can I pray for you about? Because you never know when that's going to spark something in their mind where they're able to hear and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ that he was talking about. The guy looked at me like this. And I looked around me. There were 15,000 Baptist pastors from around this nation. And I asked the guy why he looked at me like that. And he said, because no one has asked me that all week. 15,000 pastors. And no one asked that man that worked every single day. he could be prayed for about. And you see, here's what's scary. Those men are leading churches. And they're teaching people about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The second part of what Daniel said is receive and live. We can receive and try to give all we want, but if we're not living it, it's not going to be received by the person we're trying to give it to. Be mindful of how you're living when you walk out of here. And that's not to say to live without error and to live without sin, because none of us are going to live without error or live without sin. But be very aware, be very aware of how you represent the one who bought and paid for you because the world is watching. Thank you so much, Daniel. We love you, and you are a blessing. I thank all of y'all. All of y'all are a blessing to me and to everyone else. And um, as far as this week goes, uh, we have a Sunday service at 11 a.m. Be here. It's going to be a great service, great sermon. It's going to be a good time, Father's Day, so be here for that. Uh, no better way to celebrate Father's Day than celebrating the Father, right? Um, so uh, Father's Day, and then uh, next Wednesday we will continue in the book of Mark with uh, Daniel. It's going to be a great ride, and uh, guys, that, that's what we're here for. We're not here just to, to, to hear someone preach or hear someone talk. We're here to change our lives, so... Um, Let's just close out with one last word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you'd be with all of those that are here tonight, all of those that may be watching online, Lord. And I pray that we receive your word and that we live your word, Lord. And as Pastor Daniel said, that we then share your word, Lord. Let us be sharers of your gospel. But let us remember that, as, as James said, we are not called to be hearers of the word. We're called to be doers of the word, Lord. Let us walk through those doors and be doers of your holy word. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.